The ancient Greek myths say that Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, emerged naked from the foaming sea and arrived here on a beach in Cyprus, sailing on a seashell. Cyprus is an island in the East Mediterranean Sea, between Asia and Europe. Many of the ancient world's greatest civilizations once flourished here. But unfortunately, because of the tomb robbers, there is a lot we don't know about the people who lived here in the past. Tomb robbers break into tombs and steal precious artifacts, selling the treasures that they find illegally. One of Cyprus's most famous tomb robbers arrived here in 1865. His name was Luigi Palma di Tesnola, and he was the American consul. When he saw the French consul digging and removing antiquities from the island, he realized that the most precious commodity of Cyprus was hidden under the earth. Tesnola soon began to dig all over Cyprus in search of ancient treasure. With the help of many local workers, he managed to loot thousands of graves. According to Tesnola, one of the problems he encountered was that the tombs were buried one on top of the other. Tesnola's workers had to destroy the graves they found in order to reach the oldest tombs of all, which lay buried deep in the soil. Over the next 10 years, he discovered more than 35,573 objects. Some of his most important discoveries were these huge statues. And these ancient coffins, which are called sarcophagi. Tesnola was not an archeologist and did not know how to carry out archeological excavations. The result is that we do not know exactly where he found all these valuable objects. Another problem is that many of these were destroyed when they came to the surface or broke during transport. This is the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Today it is the largest museum in the world. It was founded in 1870. Says Nola's antiquities from Cyprus became the first major collection the museum acquired. The antiquities arrived here by boat, but during the trip, 5,000 pieces were lost in a shipwreck, and many more turned to dust before they reached New York. Many statues arrived at the museum in thousands of pieces. Tesnola, with the help of a German furniture maker, had to stick the pieces together. They added and stuck together heads, limbs and chests, wherever they seemed to fit. They didn't always get it right, 
but such details didn't seem to bother Chesnola and his assistant. That's how the past of ancient Cyprus ended up being cobbled together by a consul and a furniture maker, neither of whom knew anything about history or archaeology. Today, archaeologists know that this hand with a pigeon does not belong to this statue. But Cesnola had accomplished all that he wanted. He became famous, rich, and eventually director of the Metropolitan Museum in New York. Unfortunately, his example was copied by many others. Today, illegal digs, like the one Cesnola carried out, continue to take place all over Cyprus. But there are some people who did not put profit above everything else. One of them was Father Pocopis, the priest of the village of Agia Irini. In 1929, he found a clay statue in a field near his village. Rather than hide it and sell it to looters, he took it to the Museum of Cyprus. Because of this act, archaeologists discovered an untouched sanctuary where religious ceremonies were carried out over 2,500 years ago. They found thousands of statues of human figures around an altar. The excavations were carried out by Swedish archaeologists. One of them was called Alfred Westholm. He describes the moment he saw the altar for the first time. When I arrived at the dig site, I became completely silent, rubbing my eyes and blinking in all directions. There, Thousands of statues stood completely as they have been standing about 2,600 years ago, placed in nice rows around a small altar. It was a sight I shall never forget. The archaeologists stayed on the island for four years and discovered a lot about the history of Cyprus. Legendary cities, tombs, ancient castles, temples and theatres. By trying to discover the history of Cyprus, the Swedes recorded every step. Apart from filming their excavations, they captured the daily lives of the villagers of Agia Irini on film. They believed that together with the villagers, they could carry out a better excavation and discover the history of Cyprus. We would know much more about the history of Cyprus if more people had followed Father Procopus's example. But unfortunately, illegal excavations continue today almost everywhere. And the island of Aphrodite continues to lose its history and some of its most beautiful ancient works of art. <laughs>